I've never bought a house that was actually listed for sale. Hey, what's up YouTube? Thanks for joining me today. If you're new to my channel, I appreciate you. Please like and subscribe if you feel this contact or this content is valuable. But today's video, I'm going to tell you about a little bit about wholesaling real estate. Okay. That's what my channel is mostly about. That's what we do all day, every day. But, you know, I started thinking the other day um, when we were just me and my wife was walking into the movies and I don't know what made me think about it, but I just thought about how what we do in wholesaling real estate is we never buy houses that are actually listed. Okay. Uh, you know, the general public out there think that's impossible. It's like, okay, you buy a house that's listed for sale, even if it's for sale by owner, right? Well, what we do in wholesaling is completely unconventional, you know, completely opposite of what the average person out there does. So, and I know there are some wholesalers out there that actually have bought houses that are listed, but if you want to get the best deals out there, I'm talking about getting things 20 to 50 cents on the dollar like we do every day. Again, if you're new to this, it probably sounds impossible. I thought the same thing when I very first started, when I was researching and looking into wholesaling. I'm like, why would anybody ever sell their property, you know, 50 cents on a dollar? I just didn't get it, right? But now I'm actually in a wholesaler and I've been doing it close to four years now. So it makes sense to me, okay? People have all kinds of reasons to where they would sell your property, sell their property at a huge discount. You know, just to name a few, if they're going through a divorce, they typically got to get rid of the house because it's in both people's names and they want to start over with their lives. Okay. So they're probably more motivated to sell at a discount as long as it covers their mortgage that they owe. Right. A lot of people that are behind on taxes can't pay the taxes, obviously. So they're probably not keeping up with the house as far as repairs go. Probably don't even have insurance and things like that. Right. But there's a multitude of reasons why people would sell at a discount. So if you think about this, if they have their list, their house listed on the market, on the MLS, the multiple listing service that realtors use, right? It's got every buyer in the world on that because it's worldwide because it's listed on the MLS. So if people have it listed there, do you think they're very motivated? Potentially, right? There's occasions that somebody is actually motivated to sell quickly. They just don't know that there's any other way but to list it with a realtor, so that's what they do. And oftentimes those houses will sell a little bit at a discount, but not as deep as the discount as we're getting because usually the people that we deal with, deal with are even more motivated. You know, For example, they might live out of state and have a vacant property in another state that's just been sitting there. They're, they're trying to maintain, they're paying for the lawn care, they're paying the taxes every year, they're making sure you know everything is up to code as far as, you know, sometimes they even got to board up the doors and windows just to keep people out of it. But oftentimes vacant houses are just sitting ducks for um, for people to break in, live in, homeless people live in them, things like that, right? So there's always motivation out there to sell their property at a discount. So it's up to us as wholesalers to reach out to those people and help them out, right? I've said all along, and many people have said it as well, that we are in the business of solving problems, right? And ultimately, that's what business is in general. Any type of business out there solves a problem. I don't care if you need um, some gum to chew. You're going to go to 7-Eleven or your convenience store to buy the gum. They solved the problem that you had about needing gum, right? So it's no different than what we do. Uh, people are in dire need to sell their house because it's too many repairs, or they can't afford the maintenance, or they're moving away, or they're behind on taxes, or they're moving into an assisted living facility, or they're getting a divorce, or they're relocating because of a job transfer, you know, all kinds of reasons. And that's where we come into play. We can help them out. But the point of this video is I never buy a house that's listed. You know, I'm trying to help my son buy a house and he's always sending me these different properties on Zillow that are listed with a realtor. I'm like, hey, that's that's the kind of property that we're not buying. I'm not paying retail, right? I mean, yes, I paid retail for my personal house because we had it custom built. And that's just what we did, unless I want to be the builder myself, which I didn't. But other than that, when we're buying investment properties, we never, ever, ever pay retail. Not even close to retail, as a matter of fact. So like I said, most properties we buy are in the 50 cents on the dollar range. So they're half price. And that's usually the top. 
Um, we oftentimes get deals at 20 to 30 cents on the dollar. You know, it just depends on how we can negotiate it and what kind of how motivated the seller is. Sometimes they're so motivated, they just want to give the house to you. I've actually had that happen to me before. Someone was just like, I'll do anything. You can just take it if you want it. You know, I'm like, well, we want to give you some money. So we gave them 500 bucks for their house. You know, that helped them out because they were willing to give it away. That it, it sucked so bad for them that they wanted to give it to us for free. But, you know, I didn't want to take it completely free. So I said, hey, let me give you at least 500 bucks so you can move on. And uh, they were super excited about that because they literally wanted nothing. So you never know what somebody's motivation is. But the point is, there's hundreds and thousands of properties out there that are just sitting vacant. Not only just vacant, but they're just problem houses that people need to get out of. And we as wholesalers or investors are oftentimes their only solution. Okay, so, you know, a lot of things in life, you have multiple solutions like that pack of gum I told you about. I could probably go to 10 different stores within a one mile radius to solve my problem. Right. But a seller with a with a distressed property and distressed situation, they don't have that many solutions. It's oftentimes us as wholesalers are the only solution. Sure, there might be other wholesalers, but you're talking maybe, you know, a dozen that might reach out to them over you know, a period of time, as opposed to going to get a piece of gum, I can go right now to 10 places down the road, right? And hundreds of places in the area, probably. So the point is, I've never bought a property listed on the market. I've never even bought a for sale by owner property, typically, because even those people, they want to sell it, right? They typically want retail or close, as close to retail as they can get. But these people that, that don't have a house for sale, that's what I was trying to explain to my son. These people that we're buying from don't even have their house for sale. Um, we just reach out to them because we know they have a motivation. They may not know that we know, but we know because we can buy lists and things like that or, you know, do it's public public knowledge. You know, if you're behind on your taxes, we can look those things up on the accounting assessor website. So, you know, that's public knowledge to where we know that they probably need help. They just don't know where to turn. So it's up to us to reach out to them. So how do we reach out to them? You know, multiple ways, like I've talked to in the past, cold calling, um, voicemails, you know, direct to voicemail, it's called RVMs, text messaging. Sometimes we'll send them direct mail postcards. Sometimes they reach out to us via the radio or the TV or billboards or the same thing with uh, direct mail as well or bandit signs, things like that. But nevertheless, we're buying properties that are not listed for sale. That's the hardest part, I think, for people to get their mind wrapped around. I know that's the hardest part for my son, and and it's the hardest part for a lot of people, I feel, because they're just like, well, how are you buying a house if it's not for sale? Because we actively pursue those properties, and we pursue those sellers to reach out to them, okay? You know, if I want to sell my house, and I I obviously put it out there for the world to know that I'm selling my house, I'm probably going to ask for top dollar, right? just like you would probably, but these aren't the same type of people that we're dealing with. We're dealing with distressed sellers and distressed properties, both typically, okay? Uh, When I say distressed property, it usually means it needs a lot of work. It's uh, dilapidated in some way, form or fashion. It's got overgrown grass, overstuffed mailboxes, boarded up doors and windows, fallen in roof or a tarped roof, you know, chipped paint all over or different things like that. And a distressed seller is a specific motivation that they have. Maybe it is that they can't afford repairs on that house, and that's why it's a distressed house and a distressed seller. Um, but just a distressed seller in general is things like divorce, um, behind on property taxes, you know, all those things I mentioned earlier. So they could be both, distressed seller or distressed property. If they're both, it's even better, right? But the point is, buy off-market properties. You can't do that by buying houses that are listed for sale by owner or that are listed on the MLS. And I'm not saying you can't find deals that way because you can. I know people that buy those ways exclusively, but they pay a lot more too. You know, they might be paying 70, 80, 85 cents on the dollar even. But if you could go direct to seller and get another 15 to 20% discount, why wouldn't you do that? That makes more sense to me Um, because you can make a lot more money, you know, and especially once you have a machine going to where you have systems and processes built around your business and your marketing, um, you're always going to have leads coming in to where you can continue to bring those deals 
and that pipeline stays full. Therefore, you always make money consistently. But yeah, you could probably buy deals online that are already listed on the MLS or for sale by owners, but you're just not going to get as better as good of a deal. You might on occasion, but uh, we always get 30 to 50 cents on a dollar going direct to seller. So I've never bought a house on listed on the market except for my personal properties, and I probably never will. And those are the reasons why. So drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts about that. Maybe you're just the opposite. Maybe you only buy on the MLS and you're an investor, you know, because I do know people like that, like I said, but they don't get the discounts that I get. So drop me a comment. Give me a like, thumbs down if you need to. I don't care. I got tough skin. So if you stuck around this long, definitely subscribe, share this content so it can help other people. And I'll see you in the next video.